Welcome to a short reflection on Third Ordinary Sunday. God's love for humanity is outstanding as we see it in creation and redemption. He also invites every person to respond to his personal love. From the earliest of times, God has called human persons to be with him for he is the creator who has made every human person in his own image and likeness and desires to have constant contact with him. Dear friends, he invites all human persons to a personal relationship with him and when they do wrong and go astray, he invites them to a spirit of repentance to make them live a life worthy of Him. Repentance means to turn around and go in the opposite direction, change one's way of thinking, change their values, change the mind and heart, change their desires, and more importantly, change the direction of life. It means that there is an invitation for total conversion and a complete transformation in a person. However, there comes a time in the life of every child of God to respond to his invitation to follow him closely and participate in his mission. This might require a change in their present career into a service dedicated for God, for God alone. Dear friends, the first reading tells of the crucial role of the law of God in the Israel community. Ezra and Nehemiah were given the special task of God to rebuild the community. They were also given the task of rebuilding the temple of God. They knew of the importance placed in those days on knowing and obeying the law of Moses. And the second reading reveals to us how important it is for the members of the body of Christ to be united. Each member has been called to serve the Lord. He sees the multiplicity of Christians as living members of one body. Each member interacts in a constant giving and receiving. And each member gets the same respect. In fact, it is the weakest and least honorable parts that receive greater attention. For it is in mutual giving and receiving as one body that we enable each other to experience the enrichment, the vision and the freedom which Jesus wishes us to have. Dear friends, the problem with our Christian living is that it is so individualistic. God has called each person for a different function. But the unity of the church is in its source in the one spirit. Though there are many members as in a human body, the body of the church has many members, but it is one body. Dear friends, in the gospel, after reading the text, Jesus simply declares that the passage is fulfilled in their hearing. People must have been really shocked and amazed when Jesus announced, Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. By applying this text to himself, Jesus places himself on the same prophetical line as Elijah and Elisha. He declares himself to have been anointed by God to carry out and fulfill God's plan for Israel. In other words, Jesus is telling them that the messianic age is here and he is the one anointed by God to bring the fulfillment. Many were expecting the Messiah to be a mighty king, a powerful leader who would restore the political kingdom of Israel from Roman domination. But they find the young man so well known to them now making that claim. At the same time, they should have been happy when a person, not much of a stranger, tells them that he would save them. He tells them that God is close at hand. He tells them that this God is a healer and will never be indifferent to them. He will love them, free them and protect them. When Jesus teaches in the synagogues, people listen certainly, but they do not understand everything. 
and perhaps they understand nothing at all. However, they were struck by a word, a sentence, a well-placed allusion, and they remembered it and they continued to think about it. With this text from prophet Isaiah, Jesus declares himself to have been chosen by God to carry out and fulfill God's plan for Israel. In other words, Jesus is saying that the messianic age is here and he is the one set apart by God to bring it to fulfillment. Dear friends, the power and the spirit of God had descended on him at Jordan. The father had declared him as his chosen one and that all must listen to him. His divine sonship was still hidden and the people could see him as a known human person. The content of the text is very precise and will be the driving force behind all that Jesus says and thus in his mission. Jesus is the fulfillment of all the prophetic promises that have gone before him. They are addressed directly to the materially poor, those in prison, the physically blind, the oppressed and exploited of the world. The message for them is one of hope, healing and liberation, dear friends. With those materially poor, there are those who are emotionally underprivileged, those who are lonely or rejected, those who are crushed by their need to be surrounded by material plenty. All are poor, really poor. Again are those held in captivity, especially those who are unjustly in prison, but also those who guilty of some crime need conversion and reconciliation. There are many, many who are far from free. Very few people indeed are truly free and many actually fear true freedom and the responsibility that goes with it. Jesus speaks of blindness and healing. Physical blindness is far less disabling than the blindness that comes from prejudice, ignorance, jealousy and other emotional blocks. Jesus aims to reach out to everyone and provide them with a new identity and dignity. And that is his mission role as the one filled with the Spirit. The rejection of Jesus by the townsfolk was indeed shocking. He was a known person to them coming from their own place and they could not accept him. But this is only the beginning of several other rejections which ultimately led him to his cross and death on Calvary. John tells us that he came to his own and his own did not accept him. The reason indeed was the misunderstanding of their concept of a messiah and of salvation. They looked for a political kingdom and not a spiritual kingdom. Jesus proclaims this kingdom to us too and we too accept him. As we celebrate this year of faith, we ask God to send this kingdom into our lives and our hearts. May God bless all of us.